Blog post SEO optimization. It can feel like a total mystery when you're first getting started. So that's why I'm creating this video. I'm going to try to keep this video as practical as possible by showing you the eight places to put your SEO target keyword on your blog post so you can make sure that Google understands what your target keyword is so you can start showing up in Google rankings for it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Mariah, a visibility strategist and intuitive marketing expert for online business owners over at MariahMagazine.com. Now, in today's video, we're chatting all about on-page SEO optimization for blog posts. So I'm not gonna be going over like the off-page SEO tactics like backlinks, guest posting, all of that fun stuff. I will be talking about the part of SEO that you have the most control over. And that is how your content is optimized. Because if your content isn't optimized, then Google's not going to be able to understand what the main idea of that blog post is. So you're not even going to be considered for page one because Google's confused on like what you're even trying to show up for. On-page SEO optimization is all about giving the Google bots context clues so that it understands what your blog post and like what your content and what your topic is all about. Because if Google and the bots are confused, <laughs> then you can do all of the off-page SEO things like guest posting, backlinks, all of that but it's not going to actually do anything because you're not in the right section of the filing cabinet in Google's index. So you're probably wondering like, okay, Mariah, I get it. <laughs> How can I make it really clear what my topic, what my target keyword is on my blog post so that Google can start ranking me for it? And the answer is to optimize for it. If you want a checklist version of what I'm about to go over, I have one linked in the description below. So you can go ahead and download that one for free and then make sure that you are sticking around until the end of the video because I'm going to be giving some extra SEO tips after I'm done sharing my screen and showing you this. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just basically going to show you how I have optimized a blog post on my website, okay? So the target keyword that I'm trying to hit with this piece of content is speed up Squarespace website. So the very first place that you want to make sure that your target keyword is, is in the blog post title, okay? So you can see mine right up here. And this is important because the blog post title is essentially like the overarching idea of the entire piece of content. So naturally, Google will expect to see your target keyword here because it explains what the rest of the content is about. Now, in terms of headings, I want to make a note here. So on most platforms, they will automatically put your blog post title in an H1 heading, okay? So best practice for SEO is that we only have one H1 heading per blog post. So that means we are not using any other H1 headings throughout the content itself. We only want one, and that H1 heading is going to be the blog post title. You will notice that I've had to add a little extra word in here in the actual keyword itself in order to make it readable and like proper English, okay? So just know that it's not make or break if you have to add like a really small word in here, like in the, your, something like that, okay? Google is smart enough to know what keyword you are trying to target and how to connect it with the queries that people are searching on Google, okay? So obviously it would help if we didn't have to add this little word in here, but just know that like this blog post that I've already optimized is already showing up on page one for like five different keywords and this your isn't make or break. So the second place that you want to make sure that you are placing your SEO target keyword is in within the first 250 words on the page. So you'll notice that my target keyword is right here in the very first paragraph. The third place that you want to place your target SEO keyword for on-page optimization is naturally throughout the content. So naturally meaning that like if I'm reading this blog post out loud, it should make sense to the person 
that's listening to me read it out loud, okay? So you'll notice if you scroll this blog post, you'll see that I naturally repeat it throughout the content itself. I am not like taking this keyword and pasting it in random places. I'm making it so that it's natural for the user to read as they're reading the content itself, okay? So that is really important. Do not just like copy and paste and put your keyword in like all of these different areas. We want to make sure that you are considering your reader's experience first super important okay so the fourth place to put your seo keyword is inside of a couple h2 and h3 headings so you'll know that i have the target keyword right here in an h2 heading and then if you scroll down i naturally have it here in another one okay so you don't have to put your target keyword in every single heading. Actually, that might be a little spammy, but you do want to make sure that you are naturally placing it in other headings besides just the page title. And speaking of page title, we're going to scroll down to the bottom here because our fifth place is that we want to make sure that our SEO keyword is in the SEO title. So where you customize your SEO title might be different depending on the website platform that you're using. I am on WordPress, so I'm using a tool called Yoast. But on other platforms, Squarespace, Showit, Shopify, all of those, they have places where you can customize your SEO title. So you can see right here in the SEO title area, I have the target keyword that I am trying to target. Now, I just wanna make a really quick note here. This SEO title is different from the blog post title up here. And the reason is, is because on Google, they only show about 70 characters. And this title was gonna be way too long for that. So sometimes you have to customize this and get a little creative with how you're going to word your SEO title. But always make sure that the target keyword is in here. And the closer you can get it to the front of the SEO title, the better. The sixth place that you want to add your SEO keyword is in the meta description. So you'll note that we have this little cute little box here and make sure that your target keyword is in this meta description. So this is not an SEO ranking factor directly, they say, but it is best practice to go ahead and to make sure that your target keyword is in here because when people search on Google itself, Google will bold the query, the keyword that they typed in and they'll bold it in the meta description. So it's a visual of like, yes, this search result matches exactly what you searched for. Okay, and it also, this is the piece right here that people are going to read in order to decide if they are going to click on your blog post or not. So remember, it's not just about getting on page one of Google, it's also about CTR, which is click-through rate. We want people to be enticed to click on our blog posts in search results, okay? So make sure in your meta description that you are adding your SEO target keyword and make it sound enticing but don't make it sound clickbaity. Like we want it to be really honest about the content that the user is gonna find on the blog post. Okay, and place number seven for on-page optimization for this blog post is going to be in the alt text. So if you have actual images in your blog post itself, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you are using the SEO target keyword in at least one of them. Okay, so we don't have to go and like add our target keyword to every single image, especially if you have a lot of them. Google can see that as spammy. But if you have an image on here, we want to naturally work this target keyword into the alt text of the image itself. So I'm gonna click these dots, show more settings, and you'll see right here is where I can put the alt text for the image. Notice that this explanation, this alt text is really accurate for what exactly this image is, okay? But I naturally was able to add the target keyword in here, okay? So what we don't wanna do is just comma, like add a whole bunch of keywords, 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 keywords. That is keyword stuffing, okay? We want to be able to explain what is in the image 
and be honest about it while naturally trying to add our target keyword. And the eighth and last place to put your SEO keyword is going to be in the URL slug, also known as the permalink, okay? So the target keyword that I'm trying to target, speed up Squarespace website, that is the URL slug that I am using. Notice that we separate the words with dashes. We don't just like not have any dashes in here because like Google needs the dashes to be see to see where spaces naturally occur so it can pick up on the actual words. Also notice that I'm not using underscores. Google doesn't like underscores, always use dashes. Okay, so that is the eight places to put your SEO keyword. But I just wanted to note something really quick here. So if you are using Yoast, you are able to put your focus keyword into this cute little box here. Google does not see this focus key phrase. Okay, Google is not like scanning the content, scanning the back end coding of your blog post. It does not see this. The only reason why this is here is so that Yoast can run this cute little SEO analysis. Okay, so a lot of people think that by you putting in a focus key phrase here, Google is going to see the word that you are trying to target, and that is not accurate. That's why strategically placing your focus keyword in natural places to give Google context clues, that is why that's so important, because Google doesn't actually see this. This is only for the analysis itself. So if you scroll down, Yoast is going to give you feedback on your content on your optimization. Now, of course, we want to get the green, cute little smiley face, but sometimes these suggestions just don't make sense. And I would rather you optimize your content for the readers and not just for Google bots, okay? So always read over these, take a look at the improvements. Sometimes they are just not right. Like it says the key phrase is not in the title. Yes, it is. So you just have to use a little discernment here. I also want to note the length of the meta description. So it says my meta description is over 156 characters. Typically, I create my meta description at 160 characters. Yoast will tell you something different. Google likes to switch it up sometimes. Sometimes it's 160. Sometimes it will show even longer lengths, okay? So just to be safe, I try to keep it under 160. So that's it for the screen share, but I'm gonna hop out and give you guys some more SEO tips. Okay, so my last two tips for blog post SEO optimization are, number one, try to add some relevant links to your blog posts. What this is, is basically linking your blog posts to each other. So like that blog post that I just did the screen share on is about speeding up your Squarespace website. But I also, within that content, linked to a different blog post that I created about SEO tips specifically for Squarespace websites. So if you're looking for content on how to speed up a Squarespace website, you might be interested in more content around Squarespace and SEO. This is helpful because it gives the user extra content to read and it increases the amount of time that that user spends on your website, okay? So basically, like best case scenario is that users get into like a content reading rabbit hole on your website. So I would aim to link to at least like two to three relevant blog posts per blog post. And when you go ahead and create a new blog post, go ahead and go back to your old blog posts and add links to that new one. And the second tip is to include external links to your blog posts. So if you mention like a statistic a tool or an outside resource that lives off of your website, go ahead and link to it within your content. Just make sure that any links that go to an external website or go to a place off of your website, make sure that those links always open in a new tab. So when the user clicks on that link, they don't get taken right to that new website in the same tab. You want that external link to open in a new tab so when they close it out, they get taken back to your website because otherwise they're gonna be really unlikely to click that back button and head back to your website, okay? So that's it for today's video. If you guys found this video helpful, please give it a really quick thumbs up for me. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you stay in the loop with all of the new videos I got coming your way. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.